Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for supporting me up to this point even though it's been one video. But my point is, my point is that I'm going to talk about everything I did to get accepted into medical school. We're going to break down my entire application and pretty much that's it. I'm actually fixing everything that I did wrong in my last video. So like the lighting, look at that. Boom, light, boom, eyes. Can't make this stuff up. Also, check this thing out. I got this for 15 bucks off of Amazon and it's like a microphone. So now my audio is going to be spotless. You see how I'm committed to this, right? I'm committed to the game. I'm pretty much all in. Spending money, putting on makeup, looking good. I do it for you guys. Do this all for you. I'll do it for me. Okay, a little bit for me, but I do it for you guys. By the way, shout out to everybody who's been watching me, supporting me here on TikTok. I hope I'm really helping you. I genuinely enjoy helping you guys and making these relationships with you. And if you want to get to know me more, or if you want me to get to know you more, feel free to comment on this YouTube video. Feel free to reach out to me on TikTok or Instagram. I don't care. Like, I literally have nothing to do for the next two months before I start medical school, so might as well, you know? Okay guys, so for today's video, I'm going to talk about everything I did to get accepted into medical school. We're going to break down my entire application. Now one thing, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to do everything that I did. You have to get the scores that I did. A lot of people do better, some people do worse. I don't know how much worse you can do than me, but you can. Some people do different activities and everything. So definitely don't feel pressure to do everything that I did. I did a lot and it did lead to my success and you definitely don't have to do everything that I did. Hey, I'm using my laptop because <laughs> I use my phone to record my videos, if that wasn't obvious already. Let's talk about my major first. I had a psychology major, which I mostly did that because it is a little bit easier. And also I thought that it would be the best thing for me balancing that with tennis. Uh, what can I say about psychology other than that I don't like psychology. Yeah, I'm just going to be honest, I didn't like it. I thought it was kind of boring. I also didn't really get it. I like psychiatry though, don't get me wrong, but psychology didn't make sense to me at all. If I had to do it all over again, I would do biology or biochemistry. Oh my gosh, I love biochemistry. But psychology, I ended up getting only a 3.5 GPA in, which obviously is not good for medical school because the average for medical school is around 3.7 GPA. So I highly recommend anybody who's watching this right now to aim for a 3.7. My 3.5 really didn't cut it, I'm brutally honest. I got accepted because of other reasons that picked up my GPA, but my GPA wasn't good enough and I'm even surprised that I got in with my GPA. So even though it was around a 3.5, in my last two years, I averaged out about a 3.85, 3.9 GPA with a 4.0 science GPA. It showed that over the course of four years, even though my first two years weren't good, my last two years were really, really good and that also made me look good. It was at this point I realized I still talk like a fifth grader. I wasn't competitive for MD with this GPA, honestly. If I wanted to apply to MD schools with these scores, then I probably should have stayed for a post back. It would have taken more time and I had already taken a gap year, so I, didn't, I just didn't see the point. Okay, guys, this is my favorite part to talk about. I'm gonna talk about my MCAT now. I got a 510 on my MCAT, and I'm so, so proud of myself because I knew I needed a good MCAT score with my, you know, <laughs> GPA, and I really, I worked so, so hard on it. If you wanna see how I studied for my MCAT, in about four to five months, I was able to get that 510. I'll link it up here in this part of the video. I studied so hard, I cried so many tears. I didn't get to see my friends. I didn't get to see my family. I didn't do anything to get this 510. I did really, really well in my science section, my psychology sections. I did terrible in cars. Please don't take my advice for cars. Just don't find somebody else or I'll find somebody for you. Um, but my science sections were really, really good and my psych was a 130. Obviously, I showed that I got better and I learned from my mistakes that I did in undergrad. And I think they really appreciated that. Okay. Let me talk about D1 tennis, because this is actually a big deal. The reality with playing sports in college is that it's not... I don't want to say that they don't care about it, but it's not valued that highly, like the way like athletes value playing Division One sports. Medical schools want to see your stats first. If they don't see your GPA, if they don't see your MCAT, then your tennis isn't going to help you, or your sport isn't really going to help you. In Division One tennis, it was really crazy. Um, I played about 
30, 40 hours a week just on the tennis court or in fitness or in training. <sighs> and it was tough. I can't even deny it was tough. It's a sport that I love, but it's really hard when you're playing a sport that's kind of taking away from what your real goal in life is, and that's to become a physician. Adcoms love that I play tennis, but it kind of didn't save me from my bad grades. If I didn't have that MCAT score, I really don't think I would have gotten accepted in anywhere. Uh, so if anyone's watching this and you're an athlete, please make sure you have the grades first. If you see you can't handle both of them, please don't be scared to drop the sport or consider spreading everything out. That's what I didn't do is I took everything all together in four years and thought I'd be okay but I just stressed myself out. My sport was overwhelming. Everything was driving me a little crazy. I would have done well in my first two years and then done well in my last two years and I would have been a crazy great applicant but um, you know. But it's okay, I learned from it, and that's really important too. Admissions saw that I learned from my mistakes, and I actually ended up doing super duper well. Super duper well. Super duper, super duper, super duper well. In, in my last two years while still playing tennis at that competitive level, so they really love to see that. I, I had a lot of accolades, a lot of awards. So for example, I was like scholar athlete, all select team. I was New York State high school champion, which pretty much just exposed my identity. It's okay. I know I wasn't that good. I was like good at tennis. I didn't have a winning record. My my record was like really bad actually. Even though I was good at tennis, I was just always so exhausted during the season because I was doing the pre-med, I was doing my clubs, I was doing my research, and on top of that I was playing tennis. I was always stressed out, really. It's it was messy. It was ugly. It wasn't pretty. It was just ugly. Ugly. I'm reliving it all. I'm reliving everything and it's really tough for me. I'm joking, it's okay. I'm over it. My research. I loved my research. I loved my research team. It was clinical research and I worked in the psychiatric lab, which is, oh my gosh, it was so cool. I had real life like patients that came, would come into the office and I was running visits with them. I don't want to be too descriptive of the study just for privacy reasons because it was a clinical uh, position. So I was working with people, but I was talking about with them about their health, their life experiences, and then, you know, taking all this information down, making assessments and Unbelievable. It made me realize how much I liked psychiatry, but then remember when I said I hated psychology, so I gotta figure it out, man. I'm really like on two polar opposites. But I did research for two and a half years and I talked about it in my personal statement because I was able to connect how my experiences and in clinical research were almost similar to what I experienced when I was a shadower. And I saw how physicians talked to patients and had those relationships, the same relationships that I formed in clinical research. I would highly recommend do in clinical just because of that experience because of that you know, interpersonal relationship you can make with other people nothing wrong with bench work I actually wish I did some bench work but there's just no chance with my schedule at the end of the day do the research that you're the most passionate about because you'll be able to really talk about it and at comms will see how passionate you were about it mm, okay I also scribe for a year part-time. I know a lot of people do Scribe America, I didn't do that. I did a private office, I got my training done there, and then I worked for a very nice, you know, family medicine office. And it just showed me how much paperwork there is to do in medicine. It's not just treating the patients, it's about also going back and logging everything, ordering tests, knowing all these things, and it's, it's a lot of work, you know? A really good insight to see what the real medical field is. It's not just what we see on TV, you know? So when I was shadowing, I, w I shadowed infectious disease a lot. Unbelievable. It's so unique. It's just, it's mind blowing. You're just looking at all these different skin affections, which is what I saw a lot of. I also shadowed cardiology, anesthesiology, obviously family medicine and internal medicine. Definitely, definitely shadow primary care because there is a shortage of primary care physicians and adcoms want to see that you are interested and that if you were to be a primary care physician, you would be happy. And I think it's a great field too, don't get me wrong, I would be happy to be a primary care physician. I was also an in-home health aide. I did this my sophomore year. Pretty much what it is, you just hang around with somebody who needs help around the house with chores, with tasks. And it's, again, I was able to develop a really close relationship with a, a breast cancer survivor. She needed help around the house, so I would come, I would help her cook meals, I would do grocery shopping with her, pick up her medications, get her mail for her, little stuff like that. By the way, scribing and the home health aid, it's a paid position. 
The volunteer work included me being in the pediatric oncology hematology unit. Um, what I did is I pretty much just played with the kids, cleaned up after them, washed the toys. My other volunteer included like non-clinical, which is really important too. You guys want to have some non-clinical stuff in your application as well. I also volunteered in um, peer advisors for wellness. I did that for a year. I would do food drives almost every single year, affiliated with um, athletics. I also did League of Yes, did Red Watch Band program, Green Dot training, Women in Sports Day. I volunteered for that because I'm actually passionate about girls playing sports. I think it's phenomenal. Okay, so let me talk about clubs. This is a big one also. My freshman year, I was in the SAC. And the SAC is a club that's given to like the student athletes. The student athlete like association committee, I think. <laughs> Sorry. Pretty much you're connecting with other athletes from different sports to try to find new laws, new rules, new regulations to help athletes, you know, with their daily lives and present new ideas to NCAA, which is the, you know, national committee for all the athletes. But I really only did that for two years. My second year, I found um, passion for another club that I am so grateful for finding. All my best friends are from this club. It's actually like a religious club. but. I was part of like a Chabad student club and I love this club so much. I'm so grateful I found this place because I was so invested in athletics early on which there's nothing wrong with but you realize at one point that you need to kind of take a break from that and that it gets a little too overwhelming. So Chabad was my escape pretty much because of my involvement. I became the vice president of the club as a junior and the president as a senior and I really really love the club. If you guys are struggling or whatever definitely try to find the club that that's different than medicine, that's different than pre-med, and something that you enjoy, whether that's religion, whether that's art, whether it's photography or sports, find those things that aren't medically related. You don't need to do everything that's medically related. A lot of people think that, but the truth is, adcoms want to see that you're passionate about other things. It's not only about medicine and in real life. Medicine is just a part of your life, and then you have to be human when it comes to this type of stuff. Okay, I ran out of space as I was finishing the video, so everything shut down on me and I had to delete a couple apps. That's how life out here, but this is pretty much what my application looked like. Plus I had, you know, the personal statements, I had people writing pretty nice letters of recs for me because I had a really good relationship with a lot of physicians and a lot of professors. So definitely don't forget that part also. I said my GPA wasn't that high, but when it all comes together, my application was pretty solid and I was a really cool candidate and a lot of people liked me. I got three acceptances and that was way more than I thought. By the way, I applied to seven schools. I got five interviews and then three acceptances. I didn't go to all my interviews because um, I heard back from my top choice before then. But yeah, pretty much it. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much again for supporting me. I really appreciate it and I'm going to keep this up. It's a lot of fun and like I said, if I'm helping even one person, two people, I'm doing my job. Bye guys!